Welcome. This is Documentation Office Hours for the Jenkins Project. It's the 15th of April, 2022. Thanks for being here. So topics I've got on the agenda, news, and then a discussion with Sahitya on where do we want to put the upgrade instructions, then a brief status report on SheCode Africa and on Google Summer of Code, and nothing to say on open PRs, Meg. Sorry, I still have, have any other topics we need to put on the agenda. No need to apologize. That looks good to me. Okay. Sahitya, anything else that you want to add to the agenda other than the upgrade question? No, I think uh, this is pretty much. Great. All right. Well, so then then let's let's go through it. By way of news, we've got the LTS 2.332.3 release is coming. Uh, I think it's about two weeks approximately. And so uh, I volunteered us to do a change log, the change log and upgrade guide and discussed it today in European docs office hours with the release lead, Alexander Brandis, and he was great with us being the doing the update so or doing the change log the other piece is that localization is improving significantly uh -uh. Uh, thanks to a donation by crowd in enterprise they are a translation translation support software huh and they've granted us an open source license. And Alex Brandes has been showing us how to use it. And it's working very, very smoothly. It's much easier to use than, than the, much better than the existing way of doing localization. Uses a web user interface, has translation dictionaries, um, offers machine generated translations as suggestions, then you get to choose, pick and choose which one you want more than one versus the other. Cool. All right, and Gavin, welcome, and Kristen, welcome. Are there any, we've got- um, I have place? one quick question about the LTS. This is the one where the agent to controller filter is no longer configurable from the UI. Uh, no, I think we did that one. It's already okay. The dot one, it was it was out a while ago. So this one is a, a minor change oh, okay. on the change log and upgrade guide. Okay, just going to say that's covered in the PR of the security stuff. Ah, I don't okay. know what they did because it kind of remind it required a little bit of restructuring to get it. So got it. Okay, when we ever get to it, we're going to have fun probably merging. So so okay. Okay. Upgrade instructions. All right, so. So Sahitya is interested in working on this issue. Yeah. And I raised the open question. So what we've got is, is our install guide doesn't have any instructions on how to perform an upgrade. Mm. And, and that's, that's a glaring gap. And we've had several examples of people who were using the wrong techniques to do upgrades. So we really should give hints about the right technique that when on Windows, please use the Windows installer to do upgrades. When on Linux, please use the Linux package manager to upgrade if you installed with the Linux package manager. However, the complication here, and this is why we, I brought it to Doc's office hours, is where do we put it? So, so here's, the, here's the question to you as a group. We could put it in installing Jenkins, we, or let's put it this way, we could put it at the top level. In addition to installing Jenkins, we could have an upgrading Jenkins with sub subsections for Docker, for Linux, et cetera. That would probably give us the deepest coverage of it in terms of expressing how to do each of those. Um, we could instead add it as a, an addendum, as additional information on each of the installing because installing an upgrade are sort of tied to each other. Uh, opinions, comments, guidance? Hmm. Yeah. So your second option, this, this section would be installing and upgrading Jenkins. 
yeah, we could, yeah, basically, yeah, that's a good way of phrasing it. We could, we could rename installing to be installing and upgrading. Yeah, I agree. And I, I would really like to see if we, if we combined it just to be able to, when you're searching for, or you're looking at it, going to the handbook, like if I was a new user and I clicked on it, I would be like, where's the upgrade? I wouldn't necessarily know to go to look at the sub page underneath installing if it wasn't. What is, what's on the installing? Well, so then the installing page for all, the I installing think for page, all of these, you, it needs an intro that points to what's in here and tells you what you need yeah. why. Well, and, and we would put it as a top level to take that. Yeah. There's installing on Linux, Mac OS, et cetera, accessing the container, post install setup wizard. We would put another top level section here, upgrading Docker, upgrading to new versions of Jenkins in Docker. Likewise for Linux, we would add probably for each Debian, Fedora, Red Hat, et cetera, upgrading as a sub bullet there. Not much to say on war files, but conceptually. And then for Windows, it would certainly be, I would assume there it would be before the troubleshooting, but after the post install setup wizard. Does that does that seem okay to everybody if we do it as installing? The advantage I see is because the method you choose to install Jenkins is going to affect your upgrade options when the time comes. Yes, so yes. So I'm absolutely. thinking when I'm deciding how I'm going to install, I might like to know that that if you do this, you're only going to be able to upgrade but in this way or whatever. And that is that is certainly correct. You're right. By choosing a particular upgrade install method, you have chosen your upgrade method. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Does that work for you? But let's go back and look at it. Wait a minute. Let's let's play the other oh. one. What I see also is so you're going to add. It's going to be Docker and then upgrading Docker, and right. or installing Docker, upgrading Docker, mm -hmm. installing Kubernetes or installing on Kubernetes. Right. No. Okay. So it's not. Well, see. Oh, yeah. With, installing with on Docker. This yeah. one is each of these has complexities, right? So. The Kubernetes page, there would need to be an upgrade section for installing Jenkins with Helm, installing Jenkins with YAML, and installing with the operator. Ulti initially, they 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 won't exist, right? right. Sahitja will create upgrade sections. I assume one at a time and a pull request at a time. With the first target being Linux. For me, that's the one where the most people have made mistakes. Okay. So and Sahitja, does that work okay for you if you focus first yeah. on Okay. Yeah. Now, my slight concern is that this is a pretty long list under installing Jenkins now, uh -huh. and we're talking about potentially making it twice as long. No, 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 because the, the content would be inside this Linux page. So we aren't doubling this. Oh, well, I thought you said we're going to have installing on Docker or, or installing on Linux, upgrading on Linux. Well, or, so, so is it going to be installing those are and inside the table of contents here over on the right? Uh huh. Oh, okay, so the the table of contents on the left stays the way it is. It, the, the, at least that was my assumption. Is we okay. keep the the to the contents list on the left exactly as it is. So when I navigate on the left, I choose my platform. Okay. And then the details of that platform are entirely in this table of contents on the right. Okay. Yeah, so I was trying to figure out some way that we could break that. What's, what's the old rule of seven, that a list shouldn't have more than seven items. You need to then break it up and subdivide, and we're already nine. So, okay, so that goes away. There has been a number of people who have attempted to upgrade inside of Docker as well. So yes. we don't need a full section, but it would be nice to have a big warning that says, don't do that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, well, ah, yeah we, I heard we, you were a fun person, Gavin. I guess you're not. <laughs> I'm fun, uh, but I have to support those people who do that. And I, that's not fun. And gently tell them that they're idiots. Yes, okay. Uh, I've stopped. I think Mark's still being polite about it, but I've stopped being as polite about it. Yeah. yeah well, and, and Gavin's right. We have had users who said, hey, I replaced the war file inside my Docker image. Why isn't it behaving the way I expected? 
And the answer is because that's not how you do upgrades in, in Docker images, right? That's the wrong way to do things. Right. You read that right. and you're like, why? Why right, would right. you do that? <laughs> what, what would ever possess you to do that? No, so you like, know what? Uh... I can see the logic to it. I actually can. Oh, yeah. If you're no, not totally. a super Docker, per, you know, and we forget some, I'm, you know, I'm looking at another docs and we forget that not everybody knows this stuff intuitively. So Right. Yeah. Which no, is no, why I, I totally, we want to write an upgrade yeah. section. Yeah. I totally get the why they it can do it, but you're sitting there like, you have to go out of your way to try and do this. This is a lot of work and you somehow manage to do it and then it breaks. Right. Like, I'm impressed that you managed to get that far. Actually, yeah. there is something though. If I'm running Jenkins in Docker now and I want to upgrade, I make a new Docker container, which is a fresh install. Now, right. how do I keep from losing all my Jenkins stuff? By using a, a volume. Yeah. Okay. But so this accessing the Jenkins home directory talks about how you do that. You use right. use a volume. Because, you know, there's there's a sense that I say, once I install software, I'm never going to reinstall it. I will just keep upgrading it because I want to keep all my stuff. Right. So yeah, and a sentence or two could educate people so they'd stop doing things that we know are stupid. Yeah, okay. The, the strange thing is we haven't had anyone complain that their their configuration's gone away in Docker. They have repeatedly had the issue in Helm, but that's in Kubernetes, but that's a different issue. Oh, okay. Right. Right. Yeah, so so it's yeah, good point. So I'm taking from this that the the decision would be step one in the installing Jenkins on Linux page underneath the Debian Ubuntu LTS weekly install Java, then a separate, a, a new section here, upgrading. And it tells them app get update, app get upgrade or dist upgrade. I forget which one it is, but it'll be the, the correct thing for that platform. And that's the upgrade instructions. And it may also have words that say, do not do it this other way, the wrong way. Um, yeah, or you can even do it positively. Um, but it's going to mean now the tape. So the section becomes installing and upgrading Jenkins. Right. So this thing would get renamed from installing Jenkins to installing and upgrading Jenkins. And then under, I was thinking, do we have to do the others? But no, we, we don't have to make install and upgrading on Linux. We don't have to make them all because mm -hmm. we've made the whole section. Yeah. Right. Because the section still is Linux. Right. And I actually... I think it would be nice um, while you're at it, so you take a look at the the index file for this whole section and you might, I don't know, maybe that's just me, but I like if I open that, give me a little tour, a very high level, what's here, what, where do I want to go for this? Oh, oh, you're saying in this, on some this links. page, yeah. some more, some more guidance. Right. It, worth, I don't know how worth much considering. I'm not reading it. Maybe, yeah. and maybe sometimes I like links to other, the other sections, but you know. You could group it. Okay. And it might be you decide that what's here is perfectly fine. I'm not saying it's not. I haven't really looked at it that carefully. All so. right. So I think I'm ready to just record the decision. The decision is rename installing Jenkins to, and in order to make it fit on a single line, it may need to just be installing and upgrading. We may need to drop the word Jenkins from that. Yeah, it's in heading. Jenkins, yeah. I don't then, know why we're using install. I wish we could just say install and upgrade too, but apparently that's not the style. Oh, well, but it's a good question. Why not? If we switched from install, switched to install and upgrade, it will better, it will fit better. Yes. It's the only section with Jenkins, right? Could it just be install slash upgrade or, or install and upgrade? And oh, no, we've got my favorite that's using Jenkins. Yeah, it's like we got it in a couple of different I think what Meg was also saying is that there's a lot of ing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so it would be the only one. But we could start fixing, but managing Jenkins is too long. Yeah. So cutting a, you know, we cut two Manage. letters of that. Securing. Yeah, Secure. securing might, yeah. Um, just before I go back to sardine dinner, um I, I want to avoid someone saying run dis upgrade. I put it in chat, but it's it's essentially it will tell you to upgrade your entire system, every package you have on there. So uh -huh. don't recommend people do that because they could have side effects. Just tell them to APT install Jenkins again because that'll grab the newest version and update it. 
I think. Oh, yeah. oh, so you're saying, see, and I actually have strong preference to always upgrade everything. Interesting. Oh, no, okay, you so as an individual totally agree with us as a community telling someone to upgrade their entire system and install all new packages, not in favor of. I see. Okay. So, so the goal is to guide them to upgrade only the Jenkins package with yeah. the package manager. And failing that, use upgrade, not dis upgrade, because dis upgrade will upgrade things that are less safe, and upgrade <laughs> will just do more safer ones. But I would say just specifically target like upgrading Jenkins. Got it. Okay. Good point. All right. Yeah, that could be nice wisdom to put in the index file. Yeah, I mean, those are good little like like thought bubbles or side notes, but I wouldn't like say, hey, do the whole thing. Because next right. thing you know, you have someone running CentOS, you know, 6.3 for some reason, and then we tell them to run upgrade and they, for some reason, upgrade to CentOS 7 and break everything. You know, we don't want to ever get in that situation where we're like, but I follow your instructions and now you broke everything, fix it for us, you know? Right. So. And okay. I mean, but that's the place where you can say, because just sharing the understanding that it's yeah. not a don't do it. There are times when you might want to upgrade individual yeah. packages. Yeah, I wouldn't definitely not say don't do it this way, but this is just like, to maybe even just a sentence of to, to only upgrade Jenkins, make sure you run this command or something like that. Just put a prefix in to make sure that they understand they can upgrade however they want, but this is our suggestion. Right, but, and you're mentioned too of, because if I get upgrading, I might decide, hey, it's a good, I think I've seen that someplace. It's, I'm upgrading anyhow, let's upgrade my operating system. Yeah. And I think and I, a lot of time I've seen people recommend don't upgrade a whole bunch of stuff at once. Take one. Yeah, that's definitely my recommendation, but not my, so do what I say, don't do what I do, because I will update everything constantly all the time in right. one large batch but I don't recommend it to anyone. So this is just the thing. I mean, because um, a phrase that I've, I've gotten into stuff too, where I've been between two sets of people who feel avidly that you must do it this way and you must not do it that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you can say something. Some people say such and such. Other people, you know, posit that something else. It can all be written. And I, I think it makes for much better documentation. It's a better experience for the users. They learn something. I agree. I, my, my concern there is that I don't want to be like giving them one tidbit and not enough information and then get them in trouble. So if we said, hey, you know, do APT install Jenkins, that'll give you the newest version um, to do upgrade all your packages, follow the Ubuntu guide or follow the DigitalOcean guide that actually has in full detail with descriptions. And that way, you know, you're not duplicating, you're not maintaining because we have a lot of documentation in Jenkins and I don't want to do like a half ass job and get someone in trouble. Yeah, but I'm not writing the documentation, so I'm just throwing out the notes and not I'm not telling you to do it this way. Yeah, so okay. you, yeah. Great. Yeah. Anything else on this particular question? Does he so feel like he sees a good path forward? No, you comfortable? No, anything? No, no. I think this is pretty much good. Great. Okay, so add. Good. Add the upgrade sections, upgrade section to each location and and for so start small. Add to just one Linux and submit the PR. So don't don't delay submitting it. Let's get little little steps and each step that way we can tune and refine and be sure we've got agreement on. Yeah, that's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Thank you. All right. Anything else on upgrade instructions then? Uh, I want to ask one question that uh, this page is written in MD file or HTML. So while adding this uh, documentation, so it would be helpful for me. It's actually written in ASCII doc. So it's, it's okay. a, a markup language. Okay. Uh, it's got interesting similarities to Markdown, but isn't Markdown. So okay. yeah, you'll be able to find it. The way you can find it, Sahitja actually, is go to the page. I'm gonna zoom in here so it's visible. So this one, and then at the bottom of the page, improve this page takes you right to the location in the source files. Okay. So, so that gives you a, a place where you can make now, 
I'm not sure I would, rec I would not recommend doing your editing in the GitHub editor, but this at least takes you to the location so that you can make those change. You know where to go in your local copy of it. Okay. And now if you need to get a development environment set up, refer to um, John Mark Mason's Uh, tutorial in an old docs office hour, doc, old docs office hours on gitpod.io for jenkins.io dev. Okay. So he gives a nice tutorial that lets you use somebody else's computer to do the development with inside of a Visual Studio IDE. All right, anything else? No. Okay, great. Well, thank you for being willing to contribute. We look forward to seeing pull requests. That's great. Yeah. Uh, Gavin, I see that you had arrived and Diraj, you had arrived. Were there any topics you needed to add to the agenda before I just continue running through the agenda? Um, I think from my side, I was just wondering what about the upgrade guide that you mentioned uh, on Gita channel? Uh, so, oh. Diraj, that was this topic. Do you mean <laughs> the change the the for the new for the new LTS? Oh, yes. oh, sorry, new LTS. LTS. So, so that's here. Yeah, and it, okay. we I discussed it with the release lead during the Docs Office Hours Europe time, and it's a fairly small thing. Maybe six or seven changes is all. The upgrade guide has is a no no relevant topics for upgrade. So okay. I'll, I'll draft it and I'll copy each of you and invite you to review it. Yep, sounds good. So nothing else from my side. Okay, great, thank you. No, I just showed up because I'm free and saw your message and I'm like, hey, it's seven, let's come. All right, well, thanks for being here. Okay, so She Code Africa Contributhon has started. The uh, screenshot update project, the inclusive naming project, both could you could benefit from help from the docs office hours from DocSig. Uh, however, it means we've those that help is needed during Africa Africa working hours and end of day and and for people in India that's that's really a tough time. So Would that uh, I'm be middle of the night. Uh, yeah, pretty much. So it's. Okay. 10.30, 11 p.m., typically your time. What sort of help do you need? Well, so on the screenshot update project, what they're doing right now to get started is they're looking through the documentation, finding the locations where screenshots need to be updated. And, and I expect they'll then run into bumps where, hey, how do I get Jenkins into this state so I can see this screen? What are the, what are the steps I need to do to make it get there? And, and that kind of coaching will be basic Jenkins user coaching. How do you do this to get there? Inclusive naming project. This one is about them looking for the words master, slave, whitelist, and blacklist, blacklist yep. and removing those in places where it's safe. And there the, the challenge is we've got to be sure we coach them away from places that are unsafe. There are APIs, for instance, that use the word slave that simply cannot be changed, yep. right? They're, they're not, we're not ready to embark on that. I've given them guidance to say, look, first do HTML files. You can almost always make a safe change in an HTML file. Second, jelly files. You can mostly do jelly files safely. Third, strings inside Java files, but there you've got to be extra careful. So, so there it's, it's mostly coaching about what things not to attempt to modify. Uh -huh. If they want help getting Jenkins in a current, in a specific state and no one else is available, they could post in the forums and I can give it a help. I'm just not up for joining another Slack. Ah, okay. That's, that's okay. Good. So, and I like the form a little bit better because it's uh, big in public so that if we later need to be like, Hey, how did we get there? It's recorded. Mm -hmm. 
but yeah. you say you're 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 not willing to join Slack. So so that probably locks you out because in Africa I've had real difficulty getting them connected to to Gitter and using it consistently. Well, I don't I was thinking, yet know why. I was thinking the the forms, but yeah, I just like I can help oh. if, if they get stuck and no one else can answer, then yeah, they can jump on the forms and my hours are usually not the best for them, but they could, you know, if they're stuck, they can do that. But yeah, I can't commit too many times or periods or stuff like that. Good. Okay. I see your point. It's that they could use community.jenkins.io forums yeah. to ask, ask a question and that then has the benefit. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So that's one we can refer them to. That's a, a good fallback. Yeah. Fallback is the right word. Yeah. If they can't, you know, if, if they aren't getting fast response, aren't progressing in the uh, Slack channel and the Slack channel that I, I like that very good because what that really does is broadens the question to a larger group. Excellent. Okay. Good suggestion. And the concept of asynchronous communication. Right. Yep. Which we all need to be better at, but especially if you're living in a area that doesn't have the huge tech community. So. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. The pipeline help project. This is the, same project as last year, mm -hmm. trying to learn from our experiences. So it's fewer fewer people, more mentors per person. Sorry, the banging you hear is my niece or is my granddaughter. Ah, I wondered if you had company for the weekend. Say hello. What's your name, Mark? This is Jordan. Hi, Jordan. She can't hear anybody but me. <laughs> All right, down you go. Oh, of course. Oh, rats, I just broke something. <laughs> go find grandma, sweetie. Grandpa just broke something. He's going <laughs> to hurt somebody. Okay, sorry. So back to the back to the topic. That's what I get for playing when I should have been working. Um, do we have um, the owners of the plugins tuned in? We time? do. We do not have them any more tuned in than before. Uh, we've got more plug-in owners because our adoption rate is going up, but uh -huh. but we'll still have to do the same negotiation to try to get things merged. Cool. Yeah, sorry. Just fewer fewer contributors. Instead of five contributors on this project, we only have two. Okay. Also, the office hours are weekly or bi-weekly? Uh, right now, they are once a week. Okay. And we may we may switch to twice a week when the project starts. Right now we're in community bonding. So we're in the period where they become familiar with the project. They do some small prototypes, but they haven't actually started the work. Any other questions on She Code Africa? Is it going well? Um, I think they're okay with it, and I think they're they're not they're not grumbling badly. <laughs> cool. All right. Any any other questions or topics for Shikot Africa? Uh, not really. It's just I can try joining the meeting. Uh, provide the help if I can. Okay. Yes, that's all. So I'll I'll add you as an invite invitee to the meetings, to the calendar events, and you're welcome to, to drop in if you can, Diraj. And if you can't, understood. Yes, thanks a lot. Oh, and and Meg, congratulations. We do have a project manager as well. And oh. she's doing oh. doing good stuff already. So the proposal we had to ask for a project manager, we got one. Fabulous. Yeah. So, and it's, it's working well. Great. Okay. Next topic was Google Summer of Code. And I'm sorry to say that I still haven't done my reviews. So uh, I am now overdue. Uh, but due date is still April 19. Others, I think, have done theirs, but I'm the I'm the terrible one here. I haven't done mine yet. 
What do you do with all your spare time, sir? Exactly. That's the question. All right. <laughs> Any other topics? I'm I'm going to leave the hot one off, open PRs, because I don't have any kind of a good story to tell there. Any other topics before we close? No, nothing from my side. My main one was to remind you for uh, uh, reviewing, but that's fine. Oh, oh reviewing for GSOC. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but it's fine. Very good. I, I appreciate that, Diraj. Thanks very much. Yeah, that's all. All right, then let's call an end to today's session. A recording should be available in 24 to 48 hours. Thanks, everybody. Much appreciated for taking the time to be with us. Thank you. <laughs>